Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hey, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, this is Steve, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about... Organization. I'm sorry, let me say that again. Organization. Organization. Yes. Organization in Final Cut Pro 10. Correct. Okay, which is important. Very important, especially if you have just, you know, volume, volumes and volumes and volumes of clips to do. Well, everybody's shooting so much stuff now because it's it's all digital. It's so easy to keep it going. You've got a million photographs, a million clips, and, and it's just a ton of stuff. And if right. you don't get it organized, you're going to drive yourself crazy searching. For like, like, where is that? I know I had this shot somewhere. That's right. And uh, a couple of MacBreak episodes back, we showed I showed you a couple of ways of dealing with that. There's more than one way to approach organizing a project. This is yet just another way. Um, I like this method. Okay. And... Um, Particularly with a project like this, where you have just a ton of content that was shot over several days. In fact, Mark and I did a session at NAB that was right. called creating a, um, a web promo in four days. So right. we had all this, this footage to kind of collate and break down. And so what we showed in the class was, you know, well, how, how we quickly get this in a manageable state. We could start yes. cutting start and, and, and stop it. looking for stuff. Right. That's one of the cool things is is the even though that's not the, the 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 really the fun part of editing necessarily, you need to get familiar with the material and you need to put it in in some structure so you can get at it really quickly. Exactly. So here I have all these clips and I, well, the first place I start and this is a, over a four day period we shot all this you and you and I did yeah. five Ds reds you know seven Ds, a bunch of stuff, and the first thing I go to the first place I go to is down here in this corner this little uh, task menu. Yes. Uh, I go right here and I go to group clips by the. First thing I always do is go to content created. Content created. Okay. And what that does is it collates them all by date. Like you can see, all these clips were shot on October twenty first, yes, uh, two thousand eleven. If I scroll down here, you can see that there's the shots that were on October twentieth. Okay, and it shows you how many, how and you many? can and you can collapse any of those right. down. Okay, and, and I can, like, oh, okay, I, I, I see what I shot on those particular dates. Now sometimes the camera operator didn't do their due diligence and <laughs> set up the camera properly. So that oh, because because. It puts the clip in the place depending on what the camera says. Correct. Yes. Like, for example, these are B-roll camera. This is the B camera from interviews. Yeah, yeah they didn't happen in 2008. Notice it says January 4, 2008. That's, yeah, just that's wrong. not wrong. So right. that camera operator should just be fired instantly. Oh, wait, they work for free. Never mind. <laughs> okay, but see here, all of this was shot on September 23rd. Here's the A cameras of those same guys. So okay. this is September 23rd, 2011. Um, so you so, know that's what it should be. That's what it should September be. September so, 23rd. Okay. So I would select these and uh, I would go up to um, modify and choose adjust content created date and so time. So you can change it. That's the point, right? You can, you can change, change the content it. created date and time. So Great. what date did I say it was again? September 23rd, 2011. So September 23rd. And uh, we go back here, 2000. Oops. You go, I'm, I, you going the wrong way. Yeah, you got the wrong way. You go, you go down there, to go up. And then there we go. Ah, uh, it has to be slightly. So okay. look, I'm, I'm, now I'm going to set it. I'm only off by three years, eight months, and 19 days. <laughs> it was days. close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Change file creation dates as well. It was when the file was you created. Could, yeah, if you actually, wanted to do if you that. If you wanted to, you could literally do that. So next okay. time you imported it, it should be correct. I see. All right, I see. So I'm not going to do that right here. But yeah. I'm just going to click OK. This is a very useful thing to yep. be able to do, especially when you're trying to organize by date shot. So when you click OK, they should, they should, they should go, disappear. They should, boom. Boom. Where did they, they, they go? go? Where did they go? Well, hopefully they went where you uh, said. Oh, that they're, and, oh, they're still selected. That's cool. And look where to put them. It put them in the, in the September right 23rd, there we go. Okay. which is very okay. nice. So you sorted by date, and then you and can fix any problems. You, you got can, it. Yeah, fix the problems. Yeah. And the other thing is, OK, now I want to start making some sense out of all these. So you can see I've got. Some vineyard shots, I've got some processing shots, I've got some time lapse, I've got some interviews. And first thing I'll do is hit Command K, bring up the keyword uh, HUD, and I'll start entering some common categories that I'd want to keyword. And keywording is everything. Yes, it's, it is everything. So, like for example, I have some shots of the vineyard. So then I'll hit Tab, and I'll have some interview shots. So, interview. Interviews tab. Let's see. I have some time lapse. So you're deciding ahead of time what you think the right kind of keyword should be before actually applying any of these to a clip. Correct. Okay. Which you don't have to do. You don't have to do. Right. That. You can immediately apply. But this is a good way to step back and think about. Okay. What's my material and how would I like to organize it uh, before just diving in and assigning keywords willy nilly. Willy. Willy nilly, I like that. Yes, um, we will do an episode on willy nilly, but right now um, we're, we've got some organization. So you can okay. see I have these different registers. So control one would be vineyard, control two would be interviews, control three time lapse, control four processing, 
control five K, control six harvest. So, okay. so in my mind, those are the broad categories of what we shot right. when we went up to the vineyard. Okay. okay. Now, and you I, could all, you could always come up with more while you're working, but these 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 are yeah. a great starting point. Okay. So, Exactly. So I have all of these, uh, you know, keyword um, shortcuts now. Now, the other thing that that is really handy is you could, of course, uh, select the clips that you want to keyword. And then th these are part of the vineyard. So I'd hit uh, control one and that would immediately apply those keywords. And you can just and, see them kind of land on it. Right. And okay. then it creates a keyword collection over in the uh, in the event, you can see it created a vineyard. Right, in the event collection. library, there it is, okay. Right. Now you can, you can, I can continue to do this and select them and then in control one. But there's also another way that I find really handy. And um, if you go into the view menu, there's this thing called show skimmer info. Okay. And that's really kind of neat because if you skim over a clip, you'll notice, you'll see a little, a very aperture-like yeah. little feature where it actually kind of shows you the name of the clip, the duration, but it even gives you what the keyword name. It gives tags. you any keyword, and you can assign more than one keyword to a clip, of course, Multiple right? Multiple keywords. Which is huge. Right. But right now we're just doing so one. So here I am, I'm scrolling, I'm skimming on a vineyard, but when I get to a clip that doesn't have a keyword, you'll see there's no keyword. There's no keyword, right. But here's the beauty And you can also this. tell because there's no blue line there's across no blue. the top of it. That's the other yeah. visual, exactly. Yeah. But the, the really great thing about this is with my fingers poised over control one, I don't even have to select the clip. I could just, just skim over it, control one. Okay, you're just control one. You're just moving. Control you're not clicking. One. You're not clicking anything. So I'm not clicking anything. Just yeah. control one. Control one. All right, you got the idea. Now let's right. go down to something else though. Like process. This is the this is the processing section. This is how they're processing it. So this is actually control four. So that would be control four. Actually, I can that. Let me go back to processing it. So yeah. So here, just skim, control four. Skim, control four. Skim. Control four. If I want to do interviews, or here's a time lapse. What's that one that, that we assigned that control three? Yeah, so, you left it open yeah. so you can see so exactly can what these are. Exactly. And once they show up in the event library, the keyword collections, you can also drag clips right onto them if you wanted to. Right. Right. Now you can certainly drag, but I like this method. So I can, I, it's so fast. It's faster. Here's why I like this because I'm skimming to see what the content is yeah. before I actually. Okay. Because you can go through it and see and, and understand. Not because the thumbnail might not always be representative of the content. That's exactly correct. So you're skimming and, and it may not sound like a big deal that you don't need to click on a clip but the fact is when you're doing this repetitive stuff over and over again it makes a, it makes a big difference it adds up it, it right? does add up in fact yeah. I, I, this is one of the reasons I love Final Cut so much is that I'm just skimming skimming and I'm just using the keyboard and it just Final Cut understands where the skimmer is oh you want a keyword yep. there and you put it in and so you, you put can it in very quickly tag everything and if a particular clip needed two keywords while you're over you could do control one and control two yeah, you know any, example, any number of stuff you wanted maybe he's talking about maybe this interview is this control two like you said control two is the interview uh, but he's also I'm not sure why it's jumping well, back he's jumping to up the like that, but yeah. could, he's talking about the interview you can see that He's tagged with interviews, but right. the, the little tool, the little um, the skimmer info. But like you said, but he's maybe he's talking about the vineyard. So I can also then hit, hit Control One, and so there's now, both. There's and so both you, in the skimmer I'm info. I'm glad you brought that up. So yeah, it's so cool. It's got two tags on yep. it now. Yep. Two, two keywords. So um, found it very, ha a very, very fast way of going through and uh, and selecting stuff. It's fabulous. Yeah. Um, so I'm, again, I'm calling this one uh, warp speed keywording. Yeah, it's a super fast way to work. And like you say, there's so many different ways to do things in Final Cut Pro 10 that you might f discover a method and not realize there could be a faster way. Like you might be sitting there and dragging these things onto keywords and think, and that could be fast because you could lasso a bunch. But right. if you don't know the content, it's a really good idea to, to know all the different methods because this is a totally different way of working that I see could be much faster than what I've been doing. Well, it's just another Another way of working. You may yeah. tr try and say this is lame. I don't like it, yeah. and go back to the, your, you know, kind of your standard default uh, way, way of working. But it's just it's another way of approaching something. That's all. It's excellent. Cool. So uh, you find this useful? You want to learn more about Final Cut Pro 10, Motion 5, DaVinci Resolve, Smoke? Uh, RippleTraining.com is a place to check out. Steve, thank you. I look forward for some more tips on uh, on workflow. Excellent. All right. Thank you for watching MacBrick Studio.